So when we think about uh, cancer prevention, I think we have to divide it into two areas, our everyday living and what we can learn and do research in to better understand about our lifestyles in terms of cancer prevention. And then the translational research part, which relates to genes, microbiome, which is the bacteria within our body, and the, the immune system. So to focus on the, the, the first area, and, and, and these are um, of enormous interest to us and research that we are currently doing, we want to better understand how young people, for example, are being diagnosed with, with colon cancer. And if, if an intervention can occur at a younger age. So when we talk about lifestyle, um, physical activity is enormously important and is being studied extensively because physical activity and exercise is considered anti-inflammatory and inflammation is an important part of cancer development. The other field is stress management. Um, it, it's very easy to say to someone, you know, you need to reduce your stress because all of us have stress. But what now is, is um, again, being researched, you know, extensively is that when you are stressed and your heart rate goes up and your corticosteroids go up and your epinephrine goes up, that it's suppressing your immune system. So that's your ability to, to fight um, uh, the, the development of cancer cells. So that plays an important role. The other, which is actually also, you know, something that starts at a young age, our body has two to three million bacteria in our body called the microbiome. And we're learning more and more about the role of these bacteria in the development of both cancer and other diseases such as heart disease. Now, why is this important? Because parents need to understand that if they give their kids antibiotics for no good reason as kids, or if the pediatrician just says, I oh, will just take a course of antibiotic, that you may be changing that bacterial environment and you may be knocking out some of the, those bacteria that help prevent the development of cancer. These are enormously important areas of, of research. We're studying lifestyles, we're studying the, um, the, the role of diet, the role of, of, of processed food. There are so many important aspects just in terms of everyday living that we are currently doing research on to, to better understand cancer prevention. So then to take it one step further to the, what we call the translational research um, side of, of cancer prevention, that is how we can identify genes just in blood tests or in tissue samples that may predict um, the development of cancer. And this has become a, an enormous area of, of interest, again, by, by our group and, and many others. Which bacteria are good? and which bacteria are bad. And if you identify um, good bacteria, how do you make them more efficient? And if you identify bad bacteria, how do you neutralize them? The other areas that we're looking at within our, our Cancer Institute are the relationship between the immune system and the bacteria. The reason that's important is that if there's disruption in the bacterial balance, that can affect the immune system. If the immune system is suppressed, then people are more predisposed to develop diseases like cancer. So there is an enormous amount of very important scientific research going on to try and identify molecules, genes, but through simple methods. Before people even get cancer, that can be seen by an x-ray or a scan. So we need to think in terms of, of both areas. And then what we really have available to us today, which is screening. We need to pay attention to guidelines. Women should get mammograms starting age 40. Everyone should get colonoscopy starting age 45. Uh, men should get screened with PSA levels, although that, even that's controversial. So if um, tests are found positive, then further interventions are, are needed. And if we can detect cancers or even pre-cancer at an early stage, then we have a much better chance of curing people and people that have cancers 
because they detect at an early stage, living longer. Something that we're really proud of at St. John's Cancer Institute is that some of the first studies done with um, immunotherapy, with the vaccine studies done by Dr. Donald Morton for the treatment of advanced melanoma. And I remember distinctly when Dr. Morton was running these big international Cancer Institute sponsored trials, that people were somewhat skeptical that immunotherapy or vaccine therapy is gonna work for any cancer. They thought that the only way you treat cancer is you can either take it out or you give chemotherapy. And so Dr. Moore was really one of the pioneers and that all took place at this hospital and a lot of the research was done across the streets. It's something that we're enormously proud of. Fast forward to now, there's an explosion of immunotherapy. Some people even think that, uh, that chemotherapy may not be used as much as it is now, that immunotherapy is really gonna just take over. And every day there's a new immunotherapy drug. In terms of identifying which immunotherapy to use. There are many research studies going on looking for what we call targets. Are there targets in the blood? Are there targets in tissue to really focus the immunotherapy to treat cancer?